As we get into software development and learn new programming languages, the first drill is always a Hello World program. This is a fictional story about a customer who asked me to do a Hello World app for them, which got more complex as I went about developing it while understanding what they really wanted from the app. In the good old days, Hello World program was a simple text-based console application, but now that we have great platforms, great tools, and great frameworks like Windows 8, Visual Studio, and .NET, our bare minimum Hello World tutorial advances to a modern app allowing touch and keyboard and mouse and running on multiple device form factors while having elegant user interface and the code behind it to make stuff work. My customers asked me to create what they described as a very simple app that is globally friendly. So I created the app allowing the user to enter the name of a city where the app would say on their behalf hello world to that city. I thought it was a pretty good idea. I proudly showed my hello world app to my customers only to find them telling me it was very far from what they wanted and they kept repeating the app was looking pale and they wanted the app to be what they described a very simple app that is globally friendly. I probed a little further behind that and discovered they needed basically more info about the city they are saying hello world to. I knew right away I couldn't do it alone. It was time for me to bring together a team, learn our way into the world of ALM, Application Lifecycle Management, and get up to speed on new tools to help us do that. My teammates committed right away, but given I'm in Dubai, Hossam is in Cairo, and Ibrahim is in Istanbul, I decided it was time for us to collaborate using TFS, Team Foundation Service. After all, it's a free service for a team like ours. So I went on the web surf to tfs.visualstudio.com and signed in using my Microsoft account and created a new team project. I had read lots of good stuff about Scrum, so I chose it to be our process template. For source control, I had a choice between Git and Team Foundation version control, and I went for TFVC for this project. I then added Hossam and Ibrahim to the team, refactored my Hello World single developer app to be now Hello ALM World and added it to the team project to immediately start enjoying the project team room. This is where we connect and be up to date on changes to any aspects of our project, like me adding a little comment or Ibrahim changing lots of code, and Hassan getting immediately notified and able to easily see what changed, who changed it, and the reasons they wrote for that change. We agreed that I'll create the artwork for splash screen, logos and icons to have the app not appear pale again. And Ibrahim and Hussam will work on adding mapping features so the user will see where the city they are saying hello world lies in the world map. That got us started somewhat okay. I mean, we were connected, collaborating and definitely had the excitement to build the app. But as we made some progress, I knew we were very far from what I read about Scrum and any decent LM practice for that matter. Yes. I connected to an old friend of mine who is really a Scrum master from Redmond, Washington, USA. We had a great discussion and the main insight I got was to start as a team embracing the agile planning practices in Scrum. Right away, I got with the team and I was appointed as a product owner, got on our team project website on Team Foundation Service, and we planned our sprints for this release. We decided we'll go for three sprints, each one week long, basically trying to develop the app fast enough before the customer changes their mind on what they want. We committed the capacities we will allocate to the project and got the PBIs, product backlog items, logged in with their descriptions in user story format along with the estimates for the effort needed, which immediately started paying us back, as we saw how our sprint will look like from the perspectives of work for the sprint, work per team members, and so on. As we started our first planning meeting on Link, we broke down the PBIs into tasks, and agreed on our estimates for the work needed for each, and we started the sprint. We were surprised we finished a bit early and decided we were done once we had a working version of the app that now takes the name of the city, says hello to it, and uses Bing services to show the user where the city is on the world map. I took the app and showed it to my customers, and it was a roller coaster meeting. They loved it in the first scenario and thought it was the perfect thing. But it wasn't long before they hated it as it began crashing when they misspelled city names and then they started getting adventurous trying abnormal scenarios to see who will get more crashes out of the app. It was an embarrassment. 
I had to go back to my scrum guru for advice, this time with the whole team. And after a good discussion where he assured us what we were going through is not that bad for a team in their first sprint. We got a few valuable recommendations for our next sprint. One, as a team, we needed to agree on our definition of done for a sprint and fight hard to achieve that before the sprint ends. Two, quality had to be baked in our sprints left, right and center. While Scrum's shorter sprints will help us flush bugs early, we needed to get rid as a team of the notion that quality is an afterthought. Three, getting our estimates wrong is okay as long as we're continuously grooming our PBIs and keeping track of our sprint progress through the burn down charts and learning from our history. To decide if we need to take more if needed, it's all about making sure we get a minimum shapeable product with clear customer value at the end of the sprint. We started our second sprint with renewed energy while adding a new developer to the team. Ahmed Rifat comes with in-depth skills in the testing side of the house. Our definition of done now meant we will test the code before we write it and as we're writing it and then we will test the app as a whole afterwards. Our first step in the quality journey was code unit testing. Each of us committed to embrace the concepts of test-driven development and to strive to adopt them. We started with writing unit tests for our code that will test it for the conditions we think we can fail in. For example, a test will assert if we have an unvalue in the list of cities. Once we wrote the tests, Visual Studio offered us great value in many areas. We could use the Test Explorer window to run the tests and see if they pass or not. And those of us who had Visual Studio 2013 Ultimate could use the lovely code lens feature to see that without having to leave their code window. CodeLens also shows other important info on the fly, like reference to the code and jumping to that. Great productivity saver. The real importance of the test we write is that if in the future a change happens to the code breaking it, then it will be automatically detected, helping us to immediately jump into a debugging session to see where the code changes went wrong. But our app is not just about the code behind, is it? It also has the user interface, which needs a different way of testing. And this is why we learned also how to do coded UI tests. Where we build the app user interface map and write different tests for different scenarios, uh, the UI will go through. Again, Visual Studio integrates these tests too, so we can do easy regression testing and make sure our code stays intact through changes. While these are great, there is always the need for exploratory testing, where we learn about the app behavior, design the tests, and execute them simultaneously. And Visual Studio Test Professional allowed us to do create test cases where we unleash our testing creativity and do real exploratory testing while being able to record the bugs and submit them if we find them through that scenario. This time, I had much more confidence sharing our progress with my customers. I also took a great piece of advice from our Scrum Master, which is to include our customer in our development team as much as possible. So I went to Team Foundation Service, added Michelle, who's my customer focal point in South Africa, to our team. And as Hussam requested customer feedback in Cairo, the service automatically included that as a new work item in our project, and Michelle got a mail about it. The nice thing is, Michelle didn't need to have Visual Studio installed. She got a link in the mail to install the free Visual Studio feedback client. Like Visual Studio Ultimate Premium and Professional for developers, Test Professional for testers, Blend for designers, feedback client is for customers. And every one of these clients lets us focus on the tasks we need to do in an environment that is best suited for these tasks. Meanwhile, Team Foundation Service simplifies everything else keeping the team always in progress as they grow and evolve as a team and advance through their development project. Now, we were almost done with our app and our ALM journey. We were preparing for our sprint retrospective meeting and thinking we were almost done. We invited our customer and our Scrum Master, but we were in for another eye-opening meeting.
as we started bragging about how far we came together as a team and how up to speed we were on our LM practices, our scrum master tried to use all the euphemism he could to gently let us know we were really missing the point. The two rules we got here resonated with all of us, and they still do. They were, one, we should always seek continuous improvement. Being a self-improving team is the only key. Two, while we did impress some good practices that did improve our performance as a team, there is a lot more to be done. A few examples were uh, using code analysis tools and doing peer code reviews systematically, utilizing the code coverage analysis features to see how much of our code our testing really covers and always push to improve that, automating our builds and having them run nightly to have daily visibility on what changes may be breaking our metrics. I guess the real rule here was, if in doubt, refer to rule number one. On the other hand, we had another interesting discussion with our customers. This one was a mixed bag. They loved the app so much and they wanted to contract us to do a V2 of it, but this time they wanted the globally friendly aspect to take a whole new meaning. They needed us to deliver the app on Windows 8, Windows Phone, iOS, Android, and create a website for it as well. While that was good news, it meant we needed to recruit and expand quickly and make sure our process and development infrastructure can take us there. As we started our planning for the new release, we knew we had our back covered as we learned Team Foundation Service supports other platforms where our new devs can now use Eclipse coding in Java or HTML, targeting iOS, and still be linked to our source control, nightly builds, and agile planning, which is now enterprise agile planning, as we break into smaller teams delivering different clients, all contributing to the overall release tool. Mainly, they can be first-class citizens to our larger development team while using the tools they need to. This was the start of a new journey with new learnings, but that is another story for another video.